dear to my heart. It's science. Now, Lauren has a fantastic team and they take care of what's happening at the farms. But I take care of what happens after the oil comes to us from the farms. So how many of you have been to our state-of-the-art blending and distribution center in Spanish Fork, Utah? Quite a few? Yep. Oh, that's good to see. That's good to see. So this is where the oil comes after it's produced at the farms. And the way we receive it is in big stainless steel drums. It looks something like this. This is what it looks like when it comes into the Spanish Fork facility. And do you know what happens to the oil after it arrives in Spanish Fork? It sits there. Yes. Sits there. Absolutely nothing happens to it when it comes to Spanish Fork <laughs> because it's quarantined. It stays on these shelves until our quality control scientists thoroughly test it. And only after it's tested is it released. Okay? So I want to talk a little bit about some of the testing that we do because I'm very proud of it. No one, and I mean no one, tests oils more thoroughly than Young Living. Woohoo! Woohoo! And, and in fact, we do so much work that I don't have time to share it all with you, but what I thought I would do is show you just a few of the tests that we do on every batch of oil that comes into the warehouse. Now there's going to be a quiz later, so pay attention. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to just walk through a few of these tests. The first thing I want to say is that no scientist depends on one scientific method to analyze anything. Good scientists will always use multiple tests to come to a conclusion, and that's what we do. The other thing that good scientists do is never test anything once. So every instrumental test that I'm going to show you today, I want you to realize is repeated three times. Wow. Okay? And then the average value from those three tests are put together for our results. So, on this slide, I'm starting out with some of the more simple tests that we do. On the left side is something called a viscometer. And this is a very sophisticated instrument that measures the thickness of an oil, how well the oil flows. And every oil has a very specific value for its viscosity, its thickness. So by measuring that viscosity value, we know if it's the correct oil, and we also know if it's a pure oil, because any contaminant will change the thickness of the oil, okay? Now on the right-hand side of this slide is something called a densitometer. And this is a, another very uh, precise instrument that measures the density of an oil, how heavy it is, right? And again, every single oil has a very specific density value. So we know by using this instrument if we have the correct oil and if it's pure. You can imagine, uh, you all know that oils float on water. Um, so if there's water, for example, in an oil, we'll see it in a density difference and we'll know immediately that that oil is not pure, okay? Now, moving along. These are, these are instruments that are based on light and the way light interacts with oils. The first instrument is called a refractometer. It measures how much a beam of light is bent when it shines through an oil. Now you've all seen this phenomenon, I'm sure. Um, if you take a stick and you poke it into a, a puddle or a lake, you, it looks like the stick is bent. Now of course the stick isn't really bent. What happens is that the light is being bent and the image coming back to your eye then makes it appear that the stick is bent. So we measure the degree to which the light is bent by an oil with this instrument. The, uh, a slightly more sophisticated version of this is the instrument on the right. This is called a polarimeter. And it actually measures the degree to which a beam of polarized light is rotated when it shines through an oil. And every oil has a very specific optical rotation value. Again, this is a great way for us to make sure that we have the correct oil, and it's also a way to show that the oil is pure, because any little impurity will change the amount of rotation of light when shining through this instrument. 
These are very expensive instruments, but they're very good to have in a quality control laboratory because it's a very quick analysis. Um, we can perform these analyses in about two minutes. We can do it three times. So it's a very quick uh, and very accurate way to determine the purity and the identity of an oil. This is one of my favorites. This is called an ICP. It stands for Inductively Coupled Plasma Mass Spectrometer. We actually have two of these devices. I won't go into the gory details, but one of them uh, measures uh, heavy metals that are dangerous, and the other one me measures metals that we're supposed to have, so uh, things that are in vitamins, for example. Okay? But the dangerous uh, metals uh, can come in to an oil from the plants. Okay? There can be things like lead and cadmium and mercury in soil and air. So we want to make sure that it's not in our oils when we receive them. Now what I like about these instruments, not only that they're really big and they look sophisticated and they're sort of fun to drive, uh, what I like about them is their sensitivity. These things are incredibly sensitive. This particular instrument in this picture is able to detect a metal at a part per billion level. Now said another way, that means we can find one atom or one molecule of a metal in a billion molecules of oil. Wow. Okay? Now one in a billion is a difficult thing to sort of envision, uh, but if you think about it uh, as one drop of water in an entire Olympic-sized swimming pool, that's wow. about one in a billion. Mm -hmm. Now for me, even that's a little bit hard to envision. Yeah. So I have another statistic for you. One in a billion is about one second in 36 years. Wow. So that's how sensitive these instruments are. We're able to pick out incredibly small amounts of metal contaminants. Now I think most of you know about these instruments. These are chromatographs. We often talk about GCMS. That's a gas chromatograph with a mass spectrometer on it. And that's actually the instrument that's shown here on the left. GC is very useful because what it does is separate an oil into all of its individual components. And most oils are made up of anywhere from, oh, about 50 to 400 different components. So this allows us to break down an oil, essentially, and to look at every single molecule that's in that oil to make sure that all the components are in there at the proper amount, and that the right components are in there, and that there's no uh, incorrect components. So again, it helps us check with purity, as well as uh, potency of an oil. Now the instrument on the right is a very similar instrument. It does the same thing, but it does it in a liquid form. The one on the left is a gas chromatograph, the one on the right is a liquid chromatograph. They do the same thing. The only difference is that some oils don't readily turn into gases when they're warmed up. So those we put through a, a liquid chromatograph. Uh, incidentally, between our two laboratories in Utah, we have an R&D laboratory and the quality control laboratory. We have about a dozen of these instruments and they're running 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. So this is a huge investment in both time and in money to ensure that you're getting the best oils in the world. I want to talk a little bit about Another instrument that's very sophisticated is called a Fourier Transform Infrared Spectrophotometer. You all get that? <laughs> Say it with me. Fourier Transform? No, I'm never going <laughs> This is an instrument that actually measures the chemical bonds in molecules. So if you think about it in combination with what I just told you on the gas chromatographs, the gas chromatograph will tell us exactly what molecules are in an oil. This actually tells us how those molecules are put together. And between these two methods, we get a very, very precise fingerprint of every oil that comes through our lab. Again, very sensitive, um, very uh, uh, sort of uh, complementary techniques that we use here. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk a little bit about our microbiology lab as well. And so I showed a picture on the right here of something called an automated microenumerator. This is something that our microbiology team uses routinely. And this is a device that not only identifies bacteria, but it counts the number of bacteria in a sample. Wow. Now you might say, why would we want to do that? We don't ever want to have any bacteria, right? 
but we do. Okay? Some products, for example, probiotics, we need a certain amount of bacteria, so we want to be able to accurately count what's in there because those are good bacteria. Other products, we want to see that there's no bacteria, obviously, like oils. You all with me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. still awake? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. Interesting. We do a number of other tests, which I'm not going to go into the details of, but I wanted to just show you a few images of different things that we do. Um, the one that I do want to mention just slightly is the flashpoint test, because that's a very important one for us. All oils have a certain temperature at which they will ignite. That's called the flashpoint. We accurately measure that, again, as a measure of purity, and also as a measure of it being a proper oil. But there's one other reason we do it. This is very important. We need to know at what temperature these things ignite because we ship them all over the world. And I don't want to put these in a hot truck and send it across the desert if it has a low flash point and it's going to explode. Oh. Right, Alan? I'm just checking to make sure you're awake. Okay. <laughs> now, just as important as the actual tests that we do is the methodology, methodology that we use to test. Okay? And this is our sort of outline of the process that we use to test. So what happens is, I said, the oils come into the facility, they're quarantined. The quality control laboratory, which is QC testing here, takes samples of those oils to the lab, and they begin their testing program. Now remember, they do um, all, every oil is a little bit different, but they generally they do all 15 of those different methods that I just showed you, and they repeat each one three times. So that's 45 different analyses that are done on an oil when it comes into the warehouse. Mm -hmm. If, heaven forbid, the oil fails one of those tests, if it doesn't meet our specifications, that oil is sent off to another laboratory up in Lehigh, Utah, which is our R&D facility, and it's retested using some different methodology, um, some things that are a little bit more sophisticated and take a little longer to perform. At that point, the R&D laboratory will say, okay, uh, quality control, we think it passes, so we'll send it back to quality control, and the whole process starts over again, quality control retested. If, on the other hand, the R&D team confirms that indeed the product does not meet our specifications and it fails any one of those tests, that oil is disposed of. And that's just the cost of doing business. Every, week, every year we dispose of millions of dollars worth of oil because it doesn't meet our high quality standards. And it's much better, in my humble opinion, for Young Living to dispose of oils and spend a little money than to send anything out to you that's the slightest bit inferior. Mm -hmm. Woo -hoo! Now, usually things pass. So now we're on the bottom of this flow chart, okay? If something passes all 45 analyses of the quality control laboratory, the oil is sent off for either bottling as a single or for blending. And then do you know what happens? The whole thing starts over again. After the product is sealed in the final bottle, in the final package, samples are sent back to the quality control lab again and everything is retested just to make sure nothing happened during the bottling or blending process. Wow. Okay. So think about that. I told you it was about 45 different analyses that were performed, and then it all gets repeated again. So nothing goes out the door to you until it's been tested about 90 times, 45 times two. No one does that much testing in this yes. industry. Okay? Now, this process is relatively routine for us. We do it every day. One of the things that's a little bit less routine, but I thought that you should know about, is something else that we do that no one else does. And that is that we send scientists out to the farms. These are actually R&D scientists that report to me. And they go out with Lauren's teams to the farms. And what they do is they test the soil. And they test the air. And they test the water. And they test the baby sprouts as they emerge from the seeds just to confirm that we're getting the highest quality plants before they become oils that come to us. That's something that no one else does either. I, that's, I think
think I'm going to stop there, but I want you to get a feel for the enormous amount of testing that we do. This is a huge yes. effort, and it's a huge expenditure. And this is something that Gary in particular is very proud of. The, the amount of investment that we've put into our quality control system is just extraordinary. And I have no problem saying that because of this, we are absolutely the undisputed leader in essential oil science. Now that is, peer, is pillar number two for the seed to seal program. And I'm going to leave you with that, and we'll continue on to pillar number three. I'll see you all later. Thanks.